In this video, we shall look at the approach for tuning the learning rates for your architecture. Before looking at the code, let's get some terminologies out of the way. So what is a learning rate? It is the step size or the proportion with which weights are being updated when you train a model. Usually in a gradient descent algorithm, there are two components that drive your weight updates. First, it's the gradient that's calculated by your optimization algorithm, like gradient descent, RMS prop, ADAM, etc. The second is the learning rate, which is the percentage applied on top of the gradient used for updating the weights. You can look at the formula below written here, where I've highlighted eta, which is the learning rate parameter, and how it is actually applied on top of the gradient calculated by the algorithm. So gt is the gradient, and here we are going to be updating the weights in the opposite direction, which is why this negative sign is there, and then multiplied by the eta, which is going to say give the proportion of the learning rate applied on the gradient. So LR, or the learning rate, is between 1 and 1 point e power uh, minus 6, and then default values usually are 0 0.1 and 1. Okay. So the other terminology that we need to know is what does it really control and w whether it is important or not. So LR is one of the most important parameters and if there is only one parameter you want to tune for your architecture then it would have to be LR. So what does a learning rate or an LR really control? It controls how quickly or slowly our neural network learns the problem. Okay. So now if too, mu too large learning rate means the gradient descent is going to be possibly missing the minimas in your solution space and also it can inadvertently start increasing your training error rather than decreasing it. If it is too small then your training is going to be taking too long going to need more epochs for it to reach a certain level of threshold accuracy and loss convergence and also there is a risk that it can permanently get stuck in a suboptimal plateau with a large training error. So our goal is to have the right strategy for managing the learning rates. So we would have to do a sensitivity analysis with respect to the learning rate for our architecture. And it, as part of it, we have to come up with understanding which learning rate scheduling is better suited for a problem and what are the right default values for us to start with. So a couple more terminologies which associated to momentum and also learning rate scheduling I've kind of put in here. Now we'll start our hands on. First, we shall import sample generators, make blob, which is for us to generate data. Following that, we are importing in Keras layers, Keras models, which is the sequential model is the only one we'll be importing, and then optimizer. So we're going to be getting in stochastic gradient descent, ADAM, ARMS prop, ADAGRAD, ADA delta. Okay, and then on top of it, we are also importing the callback from Keras, reduce learning rate on plateau, and then the backend classes. So these are the important ones which we'll be using today for us to do certain callbacks necessary for measuring the learning rates. We shall be generating 2,000 data rows for six classes, and that's the problem or the classification problem we'll be solving today with Keras model. First, our data generator class has got three important modules. One is it is going to be generating data using make blob. It is going to give us only two features for the number of classes we have asked for, which in our case we have given it as six. And we are going to be generating it for 2,000 data rows. Then it also helps us do the train test split. So this is the standard train test split using the array indexing that we have achieved. Following that, it is going to be plotting in whatever it has currently generated. Let's now run the code and see what gets generated, which is done by instantiating the data generator class and then calling the plot function. And then we are running the train test split as well. So this is what got generated for us. The learning rate sensitivity analysis is at least a three-dimensional problem. First dimension is the initial learning rate. Second dimension is the learning rate scheduling strategy. And the third dimension is the optimizer chosen. In short, we have to explore our architecture performance along these three dimensions to come up with sensible values, strategy, and optimizer that best performs on our data and architecture. Let us now see how to do that. First, we have defined a utility class called learning rate recorder. 
that uses the Keras callback to record learning rates. Next is our main class, Naive Model, which defines the sequential architecture. The Compile Model function compiles the model with optimizers as given in the input. So in our current context, we are supporting Adam, RMS Prop, and SGD. The Build Sequential function builds up a two-layer architecture. The first layer is taking in with 50 neurons. The second layer is with 20 neurons. And the fit function instantiates the reduce LR on plateau and also the learning rate recorder class, which both are passed into the callbacks as part of the fit operation in Keras. The plot function plots us the accuracy chart, chart of actual learning rate, and the loss convergence chart. I've also made a utility function that makes it easier for us to run these analysis. So I've got two utility functions. One is a naive model factory, the other one is the print sensitivity analysis. Okay, and we're going to be using the print sensitivity analysis to really look at the output for different optimizers. So we'll start off with SGD optimizer. The first three rows of the, this particular output is for learning rates 0.1. Okay, the first row is not using any learning rate DK, which means it starts off with 0.1 and it continues till the hundredth epoch at a learning rate of 0.1. And then here we are looking at what are the dynamics of the accuracy score. And here we're looking at the loss convergence property. The accuracy chart shows a volatile convergence to a max value of 70%, as we can see here, at the 100th epoch. Then the second chart is different. The second row is indicating that we have a learning rate scheduling going on, and it has had a change in the learning rate at the 20th epoch. As we can see from the accuracy chart, that following the 20th epoch, there's a lot more stability or smoothness in its, in its nature of growth in learning. Prior to that, there was a very volatile structure. Then we are gonna look at the third row, which again is using the LR 0.1, but this time a patient value has been increased to 10 epochs. In this earlier case, I had a patient value of five epochs, but here I'm making it 10 epochs, which means it'll be patient for 10 epochs. If things are still not changing, then it'll change it. It'll again be patient for 10 epochs. If things are not changing or the er error has not improved, then it is going to reduce the learning rate. Okay, So this dynamics has now given us a much better output because what it shows is that it reached the 70% accuracy score in about 40th epoch, and it has stabilized that in the 60th epoch which is excellent, which both of the other two rows did not do because they all converged at 70% much, much later. We now finished the analysis for learning rate 0.1. And let us now try a learning rate 0.01 and do the same analysis. So the first chart here, the first row as I've, I'm showing here, is for learning rate 0.01 with no change allowed on the learning rates. So the learning rates stay stable for all the 100 epochs. And as expected, we are actually seeing that the system is gone through a volatile accuracy convergence between both validation accuracy and the training accuracy. And it took 100 epochs for it to reach this accuracy score of 70%. If we compare this chart with the next row of chart, which is here, where I'm again keeping the learning rate to be 0.01, but now I have a patient score of five, which means it is going to be patient for five epochs. If the error is still not converging, it is going to be reducing. Uh, so it has changed the learning, learning rate at the 15th epoch. As we can see here, it went from 0 0.01, which was our initial learning rate, to a much, much smaller value, 0 0.001, sort of a value, in the 15th epoch, following which it actually maintained that learning rate throughout. And the benefit of that is that from the 15th epoch, we are seeing a very large stability. Even though it's kind of wriggling around a little bit, it is not that volatile as before. And it has really nicely converged to a higher value. But at what cost? It converged to a higher value at the cost of accuracy. The total accuracy it could reach is only 65% because it has very early on itself reduce the learning rate to be a very small number. Therefore, it is now going to be learning very slowly. Thus, we need more epochs to really support it to reach a much larger accuracy percentages. So that's the key thing to note about this chart. 
Next, we are looking at the next chart, which is where we now have the patient value being set to 10. And we can see from here that it had maintained the initial learning rate for a very long time before it subsequently reduced it at the 80th epoch. And that is again shown here is that the initial value of 0 0.01 learning rate till the 80th epoch is, to, is actually the same and thus you are actually going through a very volatile learning process from an accuracy perspective. Following that there is some stability in the learning rates. The key observations are that the patient's parameter which we have given for the reduce LR function drives how long a particular learning rate is active even when no improvements are made during the learning. With the learning rate scheduling, we are able to reach an optimum accuracy much, much faster. So now let's do the same analysis for ADAM optimizer. First, we notice with ADAM, the magnitude of jumps in the accuracy chart has reduced as expected since it's an adaptive momentum optimizer. So the jumps in, these, in this particular chart compared to SGD is significantly lesser. And then the next row, we can confirm that it reached the 70% accuracy patient's value of 5 in a very tight interval. So if you see the difference between validation accuracy and the training accuracy, it has really got a much more tighter band than stochastic gradient descent. And it has reached that in the 60th epoch itself. And out here we can see that in the 40th epoch, just before 40th epoch, it has changed its learning rate. Again, it, it has a small learning rate change at the 60th epoch. Then in the next chart, we are able to see one more important thing, which is that ADAM is able to achieve a higher accuracy score of 73% at the 70th epoch itself, and it starts to have a stability there. So now what we will do is we will reduce the initial LR to 0 0.01, and then see how ADAM behaves. So let's go to this chart, and we see something really interesting going on, that with very low learning rate, the ADAM optimizer has converged to the max value of 70% in the 40th epoch itself. And the subsequent chart again confirms the same thing despite having a slightly larger patient's value. So to summarize, the initial values of learning rate, the learning rate scheduler, and the opti optimizer we choose, the three critical dimensions that drive the speed and stability of our model learning a problem. That's all for this video. I'll see you in the next video.